Hello my Soka universe, yeah, all dressed up for the performance review for the two Bundesligas with uh, definitely focus on the German Bundesliga because I have to say when I look at some of the results for Austria it all doesn't make much sense and it is partly due to the fact that uh, Austria has this weird system where points are slashed in half after the regular season then things are splitting and so teams that actually you know, I could not use expected points for that, that I don't, because suddenly if, for instance, Lusk, the moment that they were odds on to finish in the bottom half for uh, the spring, their points total suddenly increased, which is not a good thing. So, uh, but we'll talk about that. But I thought now that we still, in the winter break, the Bundesliga is about to come back. Uh, I thought it's a good time to uh, release that video and I'm going to do the one league uh, and the Eredivisie as well. For Austria, we won't have another um, <laughs> another video, have uh, you know, uh, another game happening until February. Uh, although winter is not that harsh at the moment, at least here, but it's very rainy. But uh, snow is gonna come. So uh, if you've seen my previous performance reviews, I did one for the Premier League, I did one for Serie A, I did one for um, uh, La Liga and Liga Portugal. Uh, you already know kind of how it's happening, but I think it's always the best to uh, jump right in. And we're actually starting right here with Bayern Munich, which is one of the most interesting ones uh, to begin with. But, you know, before we get into the details of the graphs, let me just explain the graphs. Here we have, uh, we have two graphs. Actually. The one to the left shows you how the expected points for the entire season have changed ever since the season started just at the beginning of august and you can see the up and down a little bit there uh and but you see not only one graph you see actually a total of 18 graphs so for all bundesliga teams with the team up top being then highlighted in the club's colors so that's why by munich you can or receiver always favorites are still very much the favorites and up on top um you can also see there's another team that kind of is uh in the middle and then it kind of gets really really tight to get it all on the bottom someone is kind of falling out uh which you can guess of course as well so yeah let's talk about the graph for bayern munich let's look at the expected points uh because it really shows a super interesting pattern we have it going up coming down going up going down going up again and if you look at it, um, at the beginning of the season has been a steady, 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 steady up in, 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 in with a one loss right before the international break. Then there's a long stretch. Then after the international break, it goes up again. Right after the international break, Bayern lost and had kind of a rough spot falling down. Everything that they gained uh, basically in October, they lost <laughs> within the international break, but then climbed up again and now at a higher point in the expected points that they have ever been before. So uh, basically, if you want to beat Bayern, uh, you better play them around the international break and you have a chance of moving on. Uh, it's not as much reflected in the change of ratings. And again, these ratings are only relative um, to the other teams because that's how I com 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 computed and I have made a note in the back of my head. Maybe for next, the next season I should do overall ra ratings and then just extract the ones for the, uh, each league. But you know work in progress and i need to have time for that basically i would need to take a one week vacation yes i am on a one week vacation but i have still other things that i want to do but you see uh that bayern's rating has been steadily going up yes a little bit up, 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 up a little bit up and down but overall has been going up and they have been separating themselves from the pack uh one of the bigger losers was of course leipzig and you can really see how there was the occasional up and down, but overall it's all downward trending. Uh, Dortmund, on the other hand, and also not too um, surprising. Remember at the beginning of the season, I think Bayern uh, did not perform well, well in the first game, but might have even lost the first game. Um, and Dortmund suddenly were re really good. Then they lose, and now it has been a similar up and down like Bayern, but instead of Bayern, where it always goes up, Dortmund rather stayed steady, and their rating actually is dropping. And especially the later drops here, October, no November, really reflect also uh, that the Champions League form was not all that great. Um, I think another very interesting was Wolfsburg, who had an excellent start to the season and uh, were even fi um, odds on to maybe finish uh, th a four third or fourth by mid-September and then a huge drop of it has been going downward ever, ever since. 
and it is especially obvious in the ratings where yes there's also Champions League a little bit in there but it has uh, suddenly there's a huge 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 drop off uh, Frankfurt is almost the opposite remember if you've been following the Bundesliga Frankfurt couldn't win a game uh, they just drew a lot but suddenly they win and then they draw it again but now they're picking up the pace and maybe the break for them came at a very inopportune moment because uh, you see just the last few games in, in December how Frankfurt is suddenly uh, sp uh, spiking up and uh, could potentially challenge for a Champions League spot again. Um, I also want to show you Le Le Leverkusen, the up and down, up and down of there, which is typically Leverkusen in the last few years. Um, and then I think the last one that's in, in, in Gladbach, where... Um, most of the season went actually quite all right. They were rather steady. And then just after the last international break, all hell break loose. You had big losses to Köln. You had a big home loss to Freiburg. These are the first two where Glock was done that they really, 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 really lost it. Maybe a little glimmer of hope there. So yeah, that is it for um, uh, the German teams that I wanted to highlight. Of course, I will leave you now with all the other graphs uh you get about 10 seconds for each of the graphs to enjoy i'll show you the previous ones as uh, that i've shown you now briefly and commented on as well but i think it's quite in interesting to look at these um as well and after the montage we'll talk about austria and how their things are going <laughs> Okay, let's go to Austria. And as I said, the big problem here is the frigging format of the league where uh, it just is a mess uh, with, you know, splitting points in half and so on and so forth. So therefore, expected points don't really uh, work 
rating is one that will work and that will be the main driver here on the left. Uh, we'll start with uh, Red Bull Salzburg. And on the right, I said that the best other thing I have is exactly goal difference, which is not a great measure, but I don't know how I could do it better in Austria. Maybe looking, maybe make um, separate uh, standings for overall uh, performance, whatever. I have to think about this. This is like some, something for the next season, but performance wise, it's a teeny bit of a mess, I gotta say. Uh, if we look at the graph, so to the left you have the rating, we see that Salzburg had uh, such a great start, up, 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 and only at the end. Uh, so November, it kind of, uh, the results went down, and, and, and you can see it also in the expected goal difference, where up, uh, when November started, Salzburg was a little bit, um, you know, they had such a uh, advantage over the rest of, of, of the league, they could actually uh, hold off the gas a little bit. And they put all the eggs in the basket in the Champions League, which in the end worked work well, but they had a good uh, rest to the season. We can also see that in Austria there is Salzburg, then there are three teams, then there are maybe two that could make up the top six, and then there's the rest in a way. However, it did not really work out all that way. I mean, uh, Rapid Wien, normally should be the second best team, is a steady D decline. They are, they are the worst losers in the league in terms of rating, also expected points because they were always uh, meant to be in there, and expected goal difference. Diff diff Rapid never could get it going. Uh, Sturm Graz was at one point really the only challenger to Salzburg, and you can see this at the beginning of October, especially when you look, you look at expected goal, goal difference. They were the only ones there. But then they also hit uh, a wall and are basically now back where they, 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 they belong. The one uh, is another one that is a big loser, is of course my Lusk. Uh, it has been going down, 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 down. The start was okay, but then you couldn't get a win even if you tried hard and it went really, really, really bad. Now, uh, the ironic thing is, and I think this is largely due to ratings changes because of good European re results. At the end of October, beginning of November, Lask was at least in a table at their worst. Yes, they had some not so bad performances, but they were absolutely at their worst because they suddenly were last in, in the table. But exactly there, is where kind of um, the stats, which actually inform one of the ratings that, that, that I've used, actually showed that there's a turnaround made for us. So actually, uh, there was then a climb up again uh, to more uh, amenable uh, <laughs> spheres, but it is still not good enough, and last will most likely not make it the next time uh, to the championship round, but have to fight against relegation, which, yeah, they probably should not be in trouble, but uh, the way the season has been going, I'm not saying anything. There's a reason I'm wearing a black jersey. So yeah, having said that, a little bit on the top four teams in Austria. I mean, there are other interesting ones in there. I leave you now with all the Austrian teams. Again, you have 10 seconds for every team, and I'll meet you at the other end of uh, that montage. <laughs>
um, how say, recapping of the performances of each team in the season. I said, with the Austrian ones, I'm not so happy overall, but you know, it's the best thing I can do at the moment that I want to get it in. Um, I'm planning to do this maybe somewhere around March again. So, you know, when uh, the Austrian league kicks into the um, playoff, uh, and also we have uh, roughly the three quarter mark in the German league. So um, I think it's a good point then uh, to look at this again, uh, probably, probably right at around the international break, but you know, all, always time per, per, per permitting. But I personally, I do enjoy these graphs. Um, I have to say the German ones totally made sense. The Austrian ones, yeah, I thought so as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!